the kind of gods. Okay. Hi, so I want to talk to you about the 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro Pros. Basically, in the last three months, I have had three different iterations of this computer. Not because there's anything wrong with them or they get damaged or anything, but I actually like them that much. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you why I think this is probably still the best 13-inch MacBook Pro that you can buy right now. Looks like you can do better, so much better. One of the reasons why the 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro is one of my favorite 13-inch MacBook Pros to buy is because I believe it's the last iteration where you can actually still get it without the gimmick bar. Like that's the only, that like it's the sweet spot where that's still an option for you. I hate the fact that you no longer have that option. It's really annoying. I mean, I edit videos and I'm very used to my function role. I use mechanical keyboards all day, every day. So. If you're going to ask me to give up my function row for some display screen on my computer that doesn't really do much for me, I'm not going to take that. And the reason why I'm not going to take that is because something that's supposed to be a quick function, something, tap another key, one simple step now becomes a three-step situation where I have to first get out of whatever the screen is showing first and then I have to expand the function row and then it's really annoying. Also, the fact that there's no escape key on most of the gaming bar computers really pisses me off. I hate that. So, if you want a computer that doesn't have a gimmick bar and actually has a function row that functions, the 2017 13 inch dual core computer from Apple is probably still the only option that you have right now. The best viable option that you have right now. So, the first thing I'd like to talk about with this MacBook is the design and the chassis, the build quality of the entire thing. It's entirely aluminium now, unlike what we were used to with Apple, building with metal and then some plastic in the hinges. They completely got rid of the plastic and eliminated the chance of that ever being a problem, which I thought was great. The only problem now is they tried to reduce the form factor of these computers so much so that it dissipation is non-existent. The moment you try to render a 30 minute 4K video with this computer, or you start to do like a lot of music production with like virtual instruments and stuff like that, any task that's a little tasking, like you try to use Handbrake to convert a video or something, the fans get really loud and the computer gets really hot, like so hot that it stops being a laptop. You can't even use it on your lap anymore. But of course, this can be mitigated by simply not using this laptop for things like 30 minute 4K video editing, I suppose. But I don't know if that's an option for people who are trying to do YouTube or, you know, video editing on a budget or whatever you want to call it. Now, one of the most attractive things about this computer as an entertainment machine or entertainment consumption machine is going to have to be the screen. It's a retina display and it looks beautiful for watching Netflix, watching YouTube, whatever you want to do that basically involves consuming content with the screen, you're going to be absolutely fine. I absolutely love watching Netflix with this computer. It's one of my favorite computers to use for that purpose, especially because of the quality that I'm getting when I'm streaming with this computer. It's like their night comparison in difference to something like a 2012, 2013, 2015 even MacBook Pro. Like you can tell it's a better screen. It's just significantly that much better. Now, one thing that would really affect your ability to consume content with this computer is going to have to be the battery life. Now, the battery life on this computer is insane. And permit me to say this, it's almost unbelievable that the battery lasts that long. I can finish an entire series 10 episodes, 12 episodes on Netflix with this computer on a single full charge and I'll still have enough battery left at the end of the binge watching to be able to reply my emails and do a little social media tweeting and Instagramming and whatever else I want to do with my computer. I think that's impressive. The fact that I can consume content for that long without running out of battery, like more than half of a day and I'll be totally fine is really impressive. The part where the battery life doesn't really hold up is going to have to be in video rendering, 4K video editing and stuff like that. But of course, if you're going to be doing stuff that's really tasking with your computer, it's probably expected that you're going to have it plugged in at some point. For performance, this computer was not built to be a performance beast. I mean, if you want one of those, get a 15 inch MacBook Pro or the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. But for this computer, it actually holds up pretty fair. I mean, of course, if you're going to be doing every video editing, this is probably not the computer to buy, but 
Does it actually work? Does it hold up? For the purpose of this performance section, I'm going to talk about two versions of this MacBook that I've had. I've had the one with the 256 gigabytes and the one with the 124 gigabytes, I believe. Now, I would actually never advise anybody to buy the 128 gigabytes version of this computer because 128 gigabytes might not sound like a problem because you think you can just use an external SSD for most of your work, but it becomes a problem very quickly after you install softwares and then you download your Spotify library and stuff like that and you have like 30 gigabytes left on your computer. It's really annoying. Like you have to go everywhere with a dongle and a hard drive. It's very, 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 very upsetting. But for what it's worth, the version that we're going to be using for this video editing test is going to have 8 gigabytes of RAM, a 2.3 gigahertz processor, Core i5 Intel, and it's going to have the Intel Iris Plus 640 graphics. Uh, that's not like a dedicated GPU or anything but it actually handles video editing just fine i have used this computer to edit 4k footage in fact this video that you're watching right now was entirely edited on this computer just to make a point to you guys and show you that it can actually handle it there was no lag scrubbing through a 4k timeline the entire time there was no skips there was no dropped frames everything worked fine in final cut pro how would it perform with Adobe Premiere though? I cannot say because I'm not an Adobe user and I do know that Adobe kind of has issues sometimes where rendering and stuff is a problem, but I use Final Cut Pro and with Final Cut Pro, this computer works perfectly for video editing. I can add effects, I can do all sorts of things. The part where it starts to lag a little bit and become a problem though is when you start to render. This is where I notice a huge difference between this computer and like the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro for example. You have like a 10 minute 4K file or 10 minute 4K video that's already edited, right? On this computer, it probably takes anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes to render the entire video out, which is a lot of time if you're trying to do stuff very quickly. But the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro doesn't even take up the 10 minutes to render that same 10 minute video. It's almost ridiculous. But if time is not a problem for you and you're not trying to save time, I think this computer can actually still handle 4K video rendering and editing to a reasonable extent that it's not a problem for content creators, somebody who is doing YouTube or somebody who is just using this laptop for school. Moving on to more of the physical bits of this computer, you only get two USB-C ports. They are both Thunderbolt ports, so you can use any of them to charge the computer. And I guess the second one can be the place where you plug your dongle in so that you can plug a bunch of other stuff that you actually use and need for your computer to function properly. It's a bit annoying that you get only two. If you wanted four, you're going to have to upgrade to the one with the gimmick bar. Uh, yeah, well, I don't like the gimmick bar. Another thing to note about the physical situation or the physical functions of this computer is the fact that they still give you the headphone jack on the right side which can actually be useful. But oddly enough, ever since I've been using these computers, I have actually never found myself using the headphone jack for any reason whatsoever. I just simply don't use it. It's either the computer is docked in clamshell mode to my monitor and the audio is passing through there, or I'm using Bluetooth headphones or hair buds or something, and there's never really been a reason for me to need or want to use the headphone jack. So I guess I wouldn't really miss it if they completely got rid of it. But then it probably needs to be there because of people who do like audio production and music producers and DJs and stuff like that. So yeah, they give you that. And oh, I do have to speak about the speakers on this computer. They sound fantastic. It's almost like a mini Bluetooth speaker when you use this computer to play music. I mean, I could completely travel with just this computer and not even bring any Bluetooth speakers with me because I know I can play music with this. It's very convenient. I absolutely love that about this computer. One thing that people really, really hate with this computer is the dongle situation. The fact that you have to carry a dongle around to be able to plug everything else to this computer. And honestly, personally, I haven't hated it as much as I thought I would. Yes, it can be very annoying if you forget your dongle or you forget to bring your dongle along when you're traveling. That can be frustrating, but as long as you always have a dongle in your bag and you always have a dongle at your house, you're pretty much settled. I mean, you're not going to hate using dongles. It's not as if functionality wise, it's a problem or they are unreliable or anything like that. The dongles actually work fine, even the cheap dongles. In fact, the dongle that I'm using now, I believe cost me like $15 
or $20 or something ridiculous like that and it works fantastic. Aluminium build, high quality stuff, I absolutely love it. I have bought two of these dongles, one for my camera bag and one to leave in the office just so I never have to experience a situation where I'm without a dongle. One of the major issues or major things that a lot of people complain about with this computer is the keyboard. The fact that you get sticking keys or something happens to the keyboard where, I don't know, it just starts to fail and keys are stuck and keys keep repeat pressing and stuff like that. This has happened to a lot of people and I am not dismissing the experience of other people who have used the butterfly keyboard. I believe this was the third iteration of the butterfly keyboard on 2017 MacBook Pros, but I have had absolutely no problems with it. In fact, I can almost say I actually love typing on the butterfly keyboards. I know, weird. For somebody who uses mechanical keyboards, I expected to absolutely hate this, but I don't. I mean, it works. It's a little mushy to type on, going from my mechanical keyboard sometimes and going down there. It's not the best experience, but the keyboard functions and I've had no issues with it. So this leads me to think maybe people who constantly have issues with their keyboards are allowing dust and stuff get underneath the keyboard. I mean, we know it's not reliable when things like that happen to the keyboard. So maybe completely avoid eating around your computer or avoid keeping it in places where there are dust or get a case or I don't know what those things are, the rubber things that you put on your keyboard to prevent it from getting damaged. Okay, so ultimately, what's my final verdict about this computer? What do I think about it? Do I think you should buy it? Do I think it's worth it? Well, for people who are just content creators of some kind, people who blog, people who, I don't know, do Instagram stuff, edit short Instagram videos, people who write, people who need it for schoolwork and stuff, it's a fantastic computer. In fact, I could easily say that for video editors, even though it's a dual core computer, it actually still works if all you're doing is uploading videos to YouTube and editing YouTube videos and stuff like that. It works for 4K video editing, but the only advice I'm going to give you with this computer is never buy the 128 gigabytes version. If you can already afford to buy that, save another hundred, $150, get the 256 GB. It's going to make so much of a difference for you and you're going to thank me for not buying that 120 gigabytes version. It's just really annoying when you're constantly running out of space on your computer. It's frustrating. Anyways, that was my thoughts, or those were my thoughts on the 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro with without the gimmick bar, obviously. And thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, share it with somebody who's trying to buy a MacBook. Oh, and I actually have a video where I'm comparing this 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro to a 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro. If you'd like to see that, leave a comment in the comment section below. If I get 10 comments asking me to make that video, I will put that video out. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you on another video. That was shot by K. Peace.